Hi everyone, I'm Tim Manley and welcome to my Inspire section as part of the Cambridge Life experience. I'm really excited to be giving you all my tips and tricks and hope you can find time to try out some photography and make some time for yourself in between teaching. First, let me ask you a question. Have you ever dreamed to become an adventurer, going to the Arctic to see the polar bears, going on a safari in Kenya to see lions and leopards? You know, like those you see in planet Earth and bring home photos that are as beautiful as those you see in magazines? Well, it had always been my dream. But with my 9 to 5 job as an IT professional working in a cubicle and only three weeks of vacation each year for 10 years, I used to think it's just a distant dream as I probably needed to have months of vacation or the high-end expensive camera gear, a mastery of all the camera settings, extreme outdoor survival skills, and unlimited budget. But well, but with my limited budget, I spent it all on my camera gear in the beginning. While I spent all my time reading photo magazines, and I would go to local parks to take photos of birds, but my photos were never any good. Later, I learned from some professional photographers that I admired, and I developed a simple framework which allowed me to get great photos without loss of time in the field or the need to understand all complicated camera settings. And I'm going to share it with you today. Are you ready? So tip number one, learning how to find animals. I remember one time I spent four hours waiting across a river in Los Angeles to watch an osprey sitting on top of a telephone pole. I kept waiting for the osprey to fly in order to get a flying photo. Eventually, the osprey flew, but it was already dark. The photo turned out to be really bad, out of focus, grainy, loss of noise. Later, I find out that there is a place called Lake Blue Cypress in Florida, United States, that has hundreds of nesting ospreys in a small area each year. You would get non-stop photos of osprey flying, landing, taking off if you spend just one morning there. You would get more and much better photos than me waiting at that telephone pole every day for five years. So it's very important to know where the animals aggregate. And more importantly, if they interact with each other, you get action shots. So as a full-time professional, not in the photography field, we just don't have much time to wait for a shot, right? So the only way is to strategize and go to places with the most action. So anyone here heard of burrowing owls? They are really tiny and cute. So I've been looking for burrowing owls for many years from some uh, bird watching uh, news, but they were always skittish and far away, not really good for photography. And one year, after some research, I met a friend who told me a nest that had eight chicks. And here are a few photos that I got. The place was windy and sandy, but tough situation is sometimes good for photography. This is one where the parent owl took flight and looked for food for the chick. And here's one where the owlet had her first flight. I would have never gotten those photos without reaching out to friends. The same idea applies to bears. For example, if you go to Denali National Park in Alaska, sometimes you would not see a bear for days riding the bus in the park. And when you did see one, it's usually miles away from the road. However, each year, brown bears wait for the salmon run in Katmai National Park, and you can get pretty close, provided that if you hire a bear guy. So imagine you are waiting in waist-deep, frigid glacier water. For six days, you didn't see a single bear because you just missed the salmon run for a few days. But then all of a sudden, you find yourself surrounded by 50 bears, all pretty close by. Bears roaring and then their echoes deafening in the valley. And then suddenly one bear locked eye with you and started to charge. You hold up your 500 millimeter lens, set shutter speed at 1600 of a second to freeze the action. And then the, the bear suddenly pounces into the water. Well, I got a photo like that in Katmaya National Park. And later this photo won the grand prize of nature's best photography and was exhibited in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington, DC. So knowing where to go and get good action shots is better than waiting at some areas where animals rarely showed up. So how do you know where the animals aggregate and in what time of the year then? 
Well, a good way is to purchase a magazine or photo book of prestigious photo contests, such as Nature's Best Photography, Wildlife Photographer of the Year. You browse through and pick the kind of images that moves you. And look at the location where it's taken. Usually, it is written on on the magazines. And then you start to do some online research. And never be afraid to reach out and ask. Also, check out eBirds Alert. You know all these different forums too. Sometimes it doesn't need to be even far from home. Here are a few photos I took within just two hours from where I live. And I live in Los Angeles, in the middle of a city. Yet these wild animals thrive. It's pretty amazing. We just never pay attention. So this is an endangered San Joaquin kid fox photo I took near where I lived, and、uh, one of my happiest moments was an encounter with this bobcat kitten and her family in California. Here is a photo of a barn owl that showed up in the morning. It was pretty rare for this nocturnal species to show up in daytime, so when they do, you gotta seize the opportunity. So all these were taken close to where I lived. So. Can you promise me you will start by doing some research and buying some magazines and books from photo contests after this talk? <laughs> well, I still have my copies of these contest magazines at my desk just right now. So now, now that you know where the animals are, you may say, "Well, I can't afford those ten thousand dollars super telephoto lens." Well, remember the photo of the bear where I got the award? I took it with a Canon One D Mark IV. And a first generation 500 millimeter f4 lens. If you are to buy it now, the camera is just about $500 used, and the lens maybe $3,000. If it is still too expensive, you can always rent a lens for a weekend, or just get the Canon 400 5.6, and、uh, it is about $900 used. So these can create world class photos. You don't really need to buy new. I recommend prime lens because they are usually sharper and faster. But Sony has this 200 to 600, which covers a big range of focal length for zooms, and it's less than 200, 2,000 dollars new. So it's pretty amazing now. So just make sure that the camera has at least eight frames per second, though. And when you have mastered the art of finding wildlife, you can get decent photos or even videos with a smartphone. So let me show you this. These are king penguins from Falkland Islands. And these are elephants in Amboseli National Parks. All taken with this, with my cell phone. And、uh, if you already own a digital SLR or mirrorless cameras, try to rent a telephoto prime lens of 400 millimeters or above, and definitely give it a try. Okay? Now you may ask how to take better photos. I remember when I started, I never, I never thought about composition or anything else. I just got super excited, and I would press the shutter nonstop whenever I saw an animal. I ended up with thousands of photos every time, and none of them were really good. So one time, I joined an expensive bird photo tour in Florida for the first time, and I was shocked that the tour leader told us to only meet for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. At first, I was a bit upset. I paid all the money, like two thousand dollars, and you asked me to only go for four hours and then go back to the hotel to rest in most of the daytime. Well, later I learned this important lesson. When I took photos in midday, it's going to cast a very distracting shadow on the animal. Because the sun is from above, in order not to get this harsh shadow on the face of the animal, what do you do? Well, you simply avoid taking photos when the sun is high up. So now people look at my photos and say, "How come the light is always so good on your photos?" Well, because I only go out during the good lights or the dramatic lights. So skip your breakfast and go out pre-dawn and wait a little bit and make sure to pay attention to where the sun is. The better you align yourself relative to the sun. The more pleasant the image looks like, and a lot of my photos were taken after work, where I just hiked to some local places to wait for sunset, when the owls are more active as it gets darker, such as、uh, this great horn owl. And one more tip, I think the legendary Franz Lanting started it, which is to 
go eye level with the animal when you shoot. So try to get as low as possible when you shoot. Sometimes lying flat on the ground to get your photos. 99 of the t- 99 percent of the time, the photos would look much better with this new perspective. However, I quickly learned that even when I get the photos sharp in good light at low angle, my family and friends still didn't really have any reaction looking at my photos. But people tend to react deeply to paintings like Da Vinci's Rembrandt. Right? Why? It's because these painters have mastered the art of creating drama to trigger your emotion. For example, when you walk in a dark alley, you naturally f- would feel scared and would walk towards the dim lights in the distance, right? So some painters would paint the environment all dark with dramatic spotlights shining on the subject to trigger this same kind of emotion in humans. So in the same way, if you can take photos like that, you can trigger the same kind of emotion by reverse engineering what these grandmaster oil painters were doing. You can grab people's attention instantly by having this kind of drama in your photos, especially nowadays with so many photos and in Instagram and Facebook, right? So, how do you learn more about creating drama? Well, my tip is: in addition to reading more photography books, read some visual arts book, art history books. For example, the Annotated Mona Lisa is a very good and easy read book. So here is a photo of uh, some of um, using this kind of uh, uh, black and spotlights. So my final tip is: don't be afraid. Believe in yourself and take action. I waited for so many years before I finally decided to take my first trip to see polar bears. I still remember when I saw my first polar bears in Alaska. Tears filled my eyes and my whole body was shaking. Not because of fear, but because of seeing them active and alive in nature. I remember we were in a small boat in the Alaskan Arctic. The light was fading, and we couldn't find any polar bears. We were about to return back to the cabin when we saw something in the distance. And when we got closer, we saw a polar bear. And when we got even closer, we saw this: the polar bears went back to sleep. And then one of the cubs woke up and gave me this look. As the sun was set. Most of us had already stopped taking photos, but I saw an opportunity with the after afterglow in the sky, and I took this one. I didn't know why, but it made me feel so calm looking at this. Later, a lady whom I didn't know emailed me. She told me her husband had cancer, and they had been fighting it together for years. They sold their house, moved to a city where the cancer center was, etc. Well, they finally won the battle. When they saw this polar bear photo, they couldn't help but remember the first night they went home after the doctors told her husband that he is cancer-free. They finally、uh, could have a good night of sleep, and this photo brought tears in their eyes. Now this photo print is in their living room. Well, I would have never imagined that this photography journey would bring me so much happiness by making a difference in other people's lives. Can you imagine what it would be like if you can make people laugh and cry and make a difference in their lives with your photos? Well, if you like to learn more about wildlife photography, I have a free PDF guide on how to take sharp action photos at tinmanly.com/sharp. Check it out, and thank you very much. I hope to talk to you soon, and good luck in your photography journey. <laughs>